I am Precious Mzea Sakaleji. Good afternoon and welcome to Kamna TV Midday News. The headlines. Court finds a PFs a JJ only 150 kwacha and case closed after his case was reduced from aggravated assault to disorderly conduct. Mines Minister Richard Musukwa warns mining companies against hiding their incompetence behind the coronavirus. And the Sakas Kamanga compound resident regret demolishing police post as crime shoots. Details coming through after this commercial. Join Pastor Victoria and Moses Chilua, the Healing Word Ministries International. Starting on the 3rd to 6th December 2020, Dr. Francis Maus from the USA returns to Zambia for a conference on issuing restraining orders. Because you see, God responds to your revelation. So if you approach God as the healer, he heals you. If you approach him as your shepherd, he will touch your soul. But if you approach him judicially, he will show you he's the cause. <laughs> Venue, the Healing Word Ministries International in Ibex Hill. Time, 17 hours to 19 hours from Thursday to Saturday. And on Sunday from 09 hours to 11 hours. For more details, call plus 260-962-965-883. You do not want to miss this conference this time. The details. The people of Kamanga compound in Lusaka's Munali constituency have regretted vandalizing a police post. The residents say as a result of their own action, crime has increased in the area. On the 27th of September 2020, Kamanga residents ran amok and vandalized a police post after officers shot, a, shot dead a 17-year-old patron during a night operation while enforcing the COVID-19 health guidelines. The residents have complained that incidents of of housebreaking have increased and that people are being attacked at night yet they have nowhere near to report details in the following report the incident which led to the destruction of a police station happened in the early hours of Sunday 27th September 2020 when police reserve officers with members of the neighborhood watch went to close down a bar called flavor nightclub in the process, an altercation resulted in the shooting of a juvenile called Timoth Zulu. This then angered the residents who mobilized and stormed Kamanga police posts in numbers, looting and ransacking the station in the process. The police has not been operational since then, and today the people of Kamanga have realized that the act was not necessary as it has led to high crime levels in the area. They are also calling on the Zambia police to deploy more trained police officers as opposed to the previous situation where the police had more reserve officers and neighborhood watch group members whom they accused of unprofessionally conducting themselves. And we want to just plead with the, the leadership that uh, please help us bring back this police station in operation. Uh, we have started receiving a lot of reports around this community that uh, there are a lot of thieves that have started uh, breaking into people's uh, homes. 2021 Munali constituency parliamentary hopeful Chris Pinchinda, who led the community-led initiative, urged members of the public to desist from breaking public facilities when aggrieved. 
He also assured to complement the rehabilitation of the police once reopened. Police never want to say, police never want to say, police will be mutundu, police will be political party. So, uka orundu mutundu banji, orundu uso pota chpani banji, uka nga ana problem, muta mangira police. Police in the FSI is a community. So, sasta mangira gondo konya police, apa pari ya apa, jenti punzi le police one. So, as my most significant party, I'm sure our president was to, he went to amelewa team vera, he said, mono mu community. So, jenti kwiti nga leo pirisa, so, the the consequences of vandalism have been felt by the people of Kamanga and now they understand that a police station is key in the maintenance of peace and unity in the community. <laughs> Patrick Soko, Cabinet News in Lusaka. In other news, the Zambia Chamber of Mines has called on the stabilization in the mining industry with regards to keeping the coast base as flat as possible in order to keep the industry functional in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Chamber of Mines Chief Executive Officer Sukwani Chilembo has told Minister of Mines Richard Musukwa that there is also a need for the government to consider the non dictatability of the mineral loyalty as well as tax structures. And in his response, Mr. Musukwa has warned mines to stop using the pandemic as an excuse for failing to meet production standards. The minister says the government is expecting all mines to either increase or maintain production considering that the profits have already been realized from the mines away before the outbreak of the pandemic. And I want to assure you for the government's highest consideration of ensuring that the company, the company or mining entities are kept afloat uh, during this trying moment of COVID. I must also thank you sincerely that uh, the mining houses have uh, weathered a storm during these difficult times to keep most of the operations afloat under difficult circumstances. And I expect that uh, we will move forward even through an enhanced process because now we are in the new normal of doing things. And certainly I do not expect that uh, COVID going forward will be used will be used as a, as an excuse uh, or as a scapegoat in terms of slowing production or uh, in, in terms of ensuring that uh, where we are supposed to be in terms of production is, is not achieved. I expect that uh, the mining houses. Uh, being a torchbearer of uh, uh, safety measures in the industry who use their skills to ensure that under these circumstances production is maintained and if not increased. So as, as, as regards the many issues that you have raised in terms of uh, the, the tax measures uh, and consistency, I want to assure you that uh, as you have seen from the the budget that the Minister of Finance did um, uh, uh, announce is that government will, will not be bringing surprises to the industry in terms of the tax measures. So would like to be consistent. Lusaka High Court Judge Justice Wilfred Muma has fined suspended Patriotic Front PF Eastern Province Youth Chairperson Emmanuel Banda, together with three others, a 150 quacha each, for disorderly conduct in a police station. Banda and his three co accused have been ordered to pay the 150 quacha each in cash or serve three months' imprisonment in default. The court has also t sentenced Maxwell Pito to 12 months' imprisonment with hard labor for assault. When passing the sentence, Judge Muma states that he has taken into consideration that the mitigation and the convicts are first offenders who deserve leniency. Judge Muma states that the police station is supposed to be a place of peace, saying that's where people run for help, hence the behavior of the convicts will not be allowed.
Emmanuel Banda, a patriotic Francada, well known by his street name JJ, was this morning, the 12th of October 2020, ordered by Justice Wilfred Muma to pay a fine of 150 kwacha cash together with his three co accused, failure to which they face a three months imprisonment. However, Max Opitu, who admitted beating up a police officer at one of the country's biggest police stations, has been slapped with a 12 month sentence with hard labor. The trio, who were jointly charged with JJ, the suspended Eastern Province Youth Chairperson with disorderly conduct in a police station, are John Lungu, Moses Slionde, and Gilford Piri. 150 Kwacha Cash is all that they have been ordered to pay or face a three month jail sentence. Yesterday, the state amended the initial charge of aggravated assault to that of disorderly conduct in a police station. Delivering judgment this morning, Magistrate Muma stated that he had taken into account that the five PF cadres were first offenders who deserve the court lenience. However, he is disappointed with their act, as a police station is a place where people run to for help, hence such behavior must not be tolerated. According to evidence before court, the convict on the 6th of July 2020 stormed Lusaka Central Police Station after JJ discovered that his cousin by the name of William Tembo had been shot dead by a police unit called the anti-motor vehicle theft. This, however, did not go well with JJ, who suddenly became unruly to Alan Bauer, the officer who was later beaten by JJ's inchmen. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamni TV News in Lusaka. In other news, the Ministry of Energy has launched the first ever energy sector monitoring and evaluation plan aimed at improving performance, transparency and accountability of technical and related targets for the energy sector. Energy Minister Matthew Nkua says the plan will provide a comprehensive tracking system that enable transparent and objective management of information that accurately depicts the implementation progress and attainment of desired results in the country's energy sector. Meanwhile, the reopen head of corporation, Arnold Bochard, has commended Zambia for its commitment to the current agreement to climate change and national determinant contributors. Details in the following report. Zambia's energy sector has continued to face many challenges. Among them is lack of proper planning and accountability. As it stands, there is currently limited integrated monitoring and evaluation and data sharing structures within the Ministry of Energy as various stakeholders have their own data needs and reporting requirements. The Ministry has since launched its first ever energy sector monitoring and evaluation plan with support from the European Union under the Increased Access to Electricity and Renewable Energy Production Project. This is the first energy sector wide monitoring and evaluation plan the country has ever developed. As you may be aware, energy is a key resource that should be developed, harnessed and properly managed within a very well-planned and structured sector. The need for sector-wide framework to harmonize the collection, storage, analyze and dissemination of energy statistics from resource endowment to production, consumption, cannot be overemphasized. It is against this background that the Ministry of Energy has developed the Energy Sector Monitoring and Evaluation Plan. The plan aims to improve the performance, transparency and accountability of technical and related targets for energy sector, climate change and sustainable development in Zambia. And in fact, we commend uh, the challenging commitments Zambia set itself uh, to the Paris Agreement on climate change and its nationally determined uh, contribution. Uh, this is very much in line, in fact, with, uh, with uh, the, the current um, policy trends in Europe uh, with our uh, Green Deal uh, objective. And that the Green Deal is, is not just about environment and climate change, this service contract is part of the increased access to electricity and renewable energy production, we call it IREC, project that uh, has an overall European Union grant contribution of 40 million euro for enhancing the enabling environment and building capacity to scale out the uh, clean energies 
and for demonstration, uh, demonstrating this uh, through the pilot project. The project scope is demand driven and uh, each previous activity which we implement leads and feeds into new work streams and this follows a systematic methodology and thus creates sustainable results. Energy is a key resource that needs to be developed, harnessed and properly managed within a well-planned and structured sector. A properly planned, structured and monitored energy sector plays a pivotal role in the development of any country as it impacts the productivity of all sectors of the economy. Prudence Chota for Kamli TV News. Well, that news item brings us to the end of Kamli TV Media News, but before we go, the headlines once again. Court finds PF's JJ only 150 kwacha and case closed after his, his case was reduced from aggravated assault to disorderly conduct. Mines Minister Richard Musukwa warns mining companies against hiding their incompetence behind the coronavirus. And the Sagas Kamanga compound residents regret demolishing police post as crime shoots. Thank you for joining me. I am Precious Mzea Sakaleji. Good afternoon.